Yeah. Hi, ladies, and welcome to our um, next um, Meet the Expert Insta Live. And we're super excited to have Faye with us from Motherhood in Mind. Um, Hey, we, um, we're so excited for this chat. It's something as a PT I'm so passionate about. And I honestly think this chat is going to go in a different direction um, from the chat that we had um, before this to what people are expecting. And I'm really so excited to get that on our feed. So thank you for joining us tonight. Um, maybe we could start, if you don't mind, just introducing yourself and telling yeah. us a little bit about how you got to where you are. Yeah, absolutely. So my name is Faye Tchaikovsky Davis and alongside being a mum of three boys, I'm also a midwife, I'm a therapist and I'm a coach. And my passion has always been twofold. It's always been one, reproduction of humans basically, i.e. going into motherhood and always been psychology. And for 16 years since I've been doing all these things, I've always wanted to put them together and fuse them. And, and that is where my passion lays. My passion is the psychology and the emotional aspects of becoming and being a mum, because it's just mind blowing. It is absolutely mind blowing. And so many women struggle with it, but it's not very talked about or it's over talked about. There's a real imbalance between actually the reality of it all um, and it was all heightened and all um, made even more relevant when I went through my own journey of becoming a mum. So a little bit of a background, before I trained to be a midwife, before I met my husband, I actually worked abroad and I was a hotel entertainer, I was a dancer. And as far as body confidence went, I mean, yeah, of course I had my little irks and things that I didn't like and, and things like that, but actually my body was, was my identity and I had an amazing body. I was, I mean, I was, I can say it now because <laughs> it doesn't sound too big headed because I'm talking about the past, but I did have an absolutely amazing body and people always commented on it and people always commented, commented on like, oh, you could look good in a, in a black bag and things like that. And that to me was my identity. And that to me was the thing that gave me power, the thing that gave me purpose, the thing that I knew that I could walk into a room and I could hold that room and, and I could just, I could be whoever I wanted basically. So that was my life pre-kids. And then I met my husband whilst I was working away. And within the space of 18 months, I had gone from that really free, really like just lovely, crazy, wild lifestyle to having a mortgage, being engaged, being pregnant, being at college to go to university, just about every commitment, every, everything like that was, was upon me. And when pregnancy started, I mean, I'd never, ever put weight on. I'd never, I never had a problem with putting weight on or anything like that. I just always stayed excited, the same. I could eat what I want. I could do what I want. And it was always the same. When I got pregnant, the weight started to go on. Now, I was at college at the time as well. So I was sitting down a lot. Um, I did have a lot of water retention as well because um, my kidneys they think are quite as functional as they should be, but it's not a problem. But I think that probably helped with gaining water as well. So I was putting weight on it and I actually put on five stone in my first pregnancy, um, which is a massive amount. It is a massive amount. I had a bit of a fixation for boost bars. And that, although I was, yeah, I know, pure glucose. Um, and <laughs> Very much of yeah. <laughs> Although I was aware that I was putting on weight, I was sort of like in this state of limbo thinking, oh, it's because I'm pregnant. Um, yeah, I've, I've never had a problem before. As soon as pregnancy is over, I will just pop back to how I was. And of course, everyone was telling me that because that's how I had always been. Um, so then I, I gave birth and of course, I didn't pop back to it. I still had, after the baby was born, four stone of weight. And then a couple of weeks later, when all the water had gone, I was still stuck with three stone of weight. And that was weight that I had gained. And it just all came crashing down. And I think with the hormones of, of, being a, of becoming a mum as well, and, and that the whole sudden change of everything was just, 
completely upon me. And I spent the next 10 years hating myself. And I mean, absolutely hating myself. Nobody knew that I felt like that. It was all very much internal. I used to look at myself in the mirror and I actually used to say, you disgust me. And it was, I look, I, I think back now and I think, oh my God, how harsh was I on myself? But that was genuinely how I felt. And there was a multitude of reasons why I felt that way, not just because of how I perceived myself to look, but what that meant to me, what, what my body and me allowing it to get that way meant to me, because that's how I felt. I felt that I had let myself get like that. And that was a big thing for me. Um, that was very much a bit of self-hatred as well, because because obviously I was I was blaming myself. Well, I had no one else to blame. So I'd let myself get like that. And ultimately that meant that I was the one that lost myself because my identity was gone. I didn't know who I was anymore. And although now I know there were so many different factors to that and so many different elements with all the changes that I made, I was blaming it purely on how I looked. And for 10 years, 10 whole years, I hated my body, absolutely hated it. And I don't even think hated is a strong enough word. I loathed it. Like I say, you disgust me was the thing I used to say to myself every single day when I looked in the mirror. And it's just, it's just awful to think that that is such a common thing amongst women. And it is a common thing because I've worked with so many women since. And ultimately, I mean, I don't think we're going to go into all of this, but it's not actually anything about what you look like. It's, it, it goes much deeper than that. But yeah, that is my little story. And that is why I have got experience when I'm talking about this side of things, because because it was me as far as I was concerned back then, that was me. It was all about body confidence, all about what I looked like. Yeah, thanks Faye. So yeah, um, so what going from what you said and you think that, or you've worked with lots of women and I think Joe and I can, can say that too. And actually what we found on our stories, this is the biggest response we've ever had on stories when we've asked women about their body confidence during pregnancy and motherhood. And that even as a PT surprised me, I wasn't, I didn't think that this would be the topic that really lit up um, our stories, but it did. So interestingly, um, and Faye, you'll probably have um, more to say about this, 55% of women said that um, they struggled with their body image during pregnancy. That went up to 85% um, who struggled with their body image after birth. And then 97% of women said that they struggled with their body image now. So really that's quite some quite shocking statistics. Um, and I'll go to some questions if that's okay. We'll just dive straight in. And I have some questions from our, from our stories. So um, I guess, what can cause low body confidence in pregnancy, birth and motherhood is a good place to start, um, uh, if that's okay. Yeah, absolutely. Now, I mean, this could have a million and one different answers depending on the actual person, but ultimately you're going through the biggest change that you will ever go through in your entire life. And that is without question. And whether you fall into motherhood and it is the best thing that's ever happened to you or whether you struggle with it a little bit, it is still the biggest change that you will ever go through. And we as humans, and especially in the era that we find ourselves, are very, very focused on the external, very focused on what is going on around us, all the things that we can actually see. And your body is there. It's right in front of you. It's, it's right there. Now in pregnancy, it's really interesting because obviously that's the lowest number of people that struggled. And I have found that actually a lot of women, they feel very confident. They feel more confident than they ever have done in pregnancy. And again, that can be a multitude of reasons. Some might not feel confident. 
and we've got 55% there. Some might not feel confident because obviously, again, they're going through that change. Others, they might feel confident because, I mean, they're, they're creating life at the end of the day. It's a pretty amazing thing what is going on. It's a, a, an absolutely amazing thing. And that can be where all the focus is. Or it might be something a little bit more like what I was going through. It might be like, oh, it's only, it's only for the period that I'm pregnant and it'll be all fine again after that. It's a bit like that burying your head in the sand. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. yeah. And then after pregnancy, it's like, boom, like even bigger change, absolute even bigger change. And you've got all these things going on. And one of the ultimate things in motherhood, which I'm sure everyone will agree with, is that sense of being pulled in different directions, that mum guilt that we get. And automatically you're thinking, oh, I am so lucky I've got this gorgeous baby. I am a mum, like so many women can't, like haven't got this chance. So many women haven't got like this beautiful, beautiful baby. So I should be so happy and I should be so appreciative and thankful that this is it. So terrible me for even considering that my boobs are a bit saggy and my belly's a bit floppy. It's like, and then that again starts adding to that cycle of, of self-hatred for, it's such a strong word, but I think most women do feel like that. I, he I hear a lot of women saying they hate their body. Uh, women don't generally say, yeah, I don't really like it. It's, it's, it's much stronger than that. And again, it's because that is the only thing that they can push all those feelings that they've got going on. They can't throw it at their child, this little unborn child. They can't blame the child for how they're feeling. So they blame themselves. And the most obvious thing is how they look. And I think that is one of the, the crucial factors. And that just continues. If you don't stop it in its tracks at this point, it will just continue, which is why you see such a sharp, sharp rise the longer it goes on. Add that to the fact that we're all getting older. Our bodies are changing anyway. Even if you didn't have a baby, your body would be changing over time. It's as simple as that. But again, you're just adding it to this loop of of things that are wrong with you and things that you can't change and you've done everything and you're in this cycle and it's just everything else. So I think those are some of the main factors. Obviously it is different for every single person, but those in my experience are definitely some of the key factors that, that create that, that drop in body confidence. Massively. Yeah, Faith, um, definitely. And I think you and I had a really interesting conversation where we talked about how the I'm really I'm body positive PT and I fully support the body positive movement. But I think there's been a real change in recent years towards almost shaming women for feeling unhappy about how their body is after the baby or even during. And I, you know, some women may love their stretch marks and they may love the history and the story that's being told by their body, but some women might just not. Um, and both are okay, right? Yeah. I don't think yeah. shame women that don't feel okay with that. And that's, a, I changed as a PT when I realized that if you just brush it off and say, oh yeah, well, don't worry, because you've got the baby, that's really not helping anyone. It's like what we do with birth, you know, birth stories. I remember being quite traumatized after my first and the health had said, well, you're very lucky, you know, and, and I didn't talk about it for so many months because I was, I felt exactly the same, so awful because I was so lucky to have a child and so many can't or have horrific situations. And it plagued me for so long and it's the same thing, isn't it? Because you, you feel you shouldn't because we should be, you know, we're grateful, which of course we are, but it's still yeah. a problem, isn't it? Yeah. And it's really interesting you say that because I hear it time and time again, and I do it myself. You sort of, you make that excuse and you keep saying, oh, I, I am thankful. I, of course I'm thankful. And it's yeah. like, actually that, you shouldn't have to clarify. Yeah. That, that's a normal thing. But it's really, really good facts. And like you say, we, we have discussed this, this, there seems to be two ends of the spectrum and this isn't just on body confidence because body confidence actually is such a, a small part of a bigger picture. 
Um, and there's two sides. You've got this side that is body shaming about um, about being overweight, about like how you look if you're not perfect. So you've got that bombardment from one side. But then on the other, you've got this other idealistic bombardment of, yeah, it doesn't matter how you look because you're beautiful. Like you must love yourself. You, your tiger stripes, your stretch marks, that means that you're a tiger mother and, and your, your apron that's hanging over, that's because you grew life inside of you. You should be thankful. You should be, think you're amazing for that. And actually, in, in all honesty, it's fine to hate your stretch marks. It's fine to hate your saggy boobs. It's fine to hate all these things because they aren't what is going on in your mind at that moment in time of what is good for you. Now, I get annoyed at both of these sides of things because they are just as equally damaging. If a woman wants to feel bad about how her body looks, she is entitled to do that. However, what happens is it can continue. And that is when it's bad because actually it's a very unrealistic thing. It's a very temporary thing. So it should only stay temporary. If you are, we'll use the tiger stripes, for example, use the stretch marks. There's not very much you can do about stretch marks. Let's be fair, stretch marks are, are there for you. You can put all the creams and everything else on as much as you want, but stretch marks, they're not really gonna go anywhere. Now it is okay to always not particularly like those stretch marks. However, there's a difference between not liking something and there's a difference between letting that thing rule over everything else that is going on for you. and it's really important to define actually why you dislike something about your body, but be okay. If don't think that you have to like something, don't think that you have to go with what either of those movements is, whether it's the body perfect ideological movement or it's the like hatred, like you should look a certain way. And if you're not, then you're a horrible person. You, it, both of those things are very, very unhealthy but it's recognizing that actually a little bit here and there is okay to feel like that. It's okay to feel crap sometimes. It's okay to feel that things aren't fair. It's okay to have all these bad feelings about yourself as long as they don't impact every part of your life. And this is where the problem lays because it's that inability to escape those small factors because they are only small factors of what is actually going on and all your focus is actually on that and it, it just overtakes everything else but by all means if you want to have a day where you're not enjoying your being in your skin absolutely fine so that's that's one of the things that I it do instill I think it's really important because otherwise you're just falling into the trap of other people dictating to you what you should be like and what should make you happy. And ultimately that's going to cause, always cause more damage than good. So that, um, what you're talking about, how allowing yourself to feel negative or to feel sad, and that's not a problem until that starts to affect how you're living your life. Yeah. I've literally only just learned that. I'm 38. Yes. That's the most liberating thing I've ever learned. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I honestly thought you had to be happy all the time. And that was a sign of good, like wellness and mental health. But yeah. actually it's just feeling the appropriate feeling. Yeah. I'm 38, yeah. I just knew that. <laughs> it's so liberating. <laughs> This is, this is why it took me 10 years because I was reading these self-help books. I, I was doing my, my degree in counseling. So I was learning all the psychology of everything. And I was like, okay, I know why I'm feeling these things. I know. And everything was saying, oh, you've just got to think positive and think happy thoughts. Mm. No, that's not going to work. It's, it, you can't, it might work for a very small space of time, but actually it, it goes beyond that. It's okay to not be okay it's okay to have your your days where you feel like angry at the world or your days where you're sad and it's like you say that realization just changes absolutely everything when I'm feeling 
annoyed or or unhappy or something like that I embrace it now I'm like ah, you know what <laughs> I'm on Saturday I'm gonna make the most of it I am gonna sob my heart out if I want to I'm gonna strop around and I am going to make the most of it because I know that tomorrow or next week I'll be fine again so this influx of emotion I'm really gonna I'm gonna own it and that is like such a massive thing because it's all a cycle and you have felt like that before you will feel like it again in the future but in between the times you'll be fine again and that's the thing it's not about being happy all the time it's not about being on top of the world it's not about having this perfect idealistic mindset and life and everything else it's about recognizing that it's all a cycle and that ultimately you're fine and fine is okay because that is how that is that is the the stasis of everything you've got your ups you've got your downs which are brilliant make the most of them as long as you get back to a nice level playing field in between because what happens is if you are completely on a low then you'll never get above a certain level so if you're feeling down all the time even when you have your highs you'll never get to a real high because you start at that low um, playing field or if you're high or brimming on the top, and this can be like with anxiety as well, you're always at that heightened level and you never bring yourself down to actually a calm level. You just bring yourself higher. So it's finding that nice balance in the middle that which is just okay or just fine. But again, we seem to have got to this point where it's not okay to be just okay. It's not okay to be just fine. You've got to be like, brilliant all the time and happy all the time and like in the most positive mindset you can possibly get no it's not sustainable okay and fine is where you want to be that is your level and everything else the ups and the downs they can go like this as many times as they want because you will always get back to being fine um and then so faith with that sort of that feeling of fine, if someone's not there right now, if they're more down and they're feeling lower, and um, we'll like stay in body confidence if that's okay. What can yeah. they do to improve their body confidence and bring them up from that like self-loathing? And I was thinking, everyone tells you how beautiful you are in pregnancy too, don't they? Oh, you know, absolutely. You look so gorgeous. But, so, but if you're up post that and you're on the other side, even like years on the other side, what can you do to bring your body confidence up? do you know what and it's now this is one of the things it's going to get harder before it gets better because what you need to do is you need to strip it all back you need to get really really honest with yourself like i said at the beginning we're so used to living in this external world and what i would recommend to anyone that is feeling bad and if they need to go through this with someone, whether it be someone like yourself, someone like me, whoever, a friend, whoever may, if they need someone to go through this with, then absolutely go through it. But it's as simple as standing in front of the mirror and asking themselves what they see. With me, I'll use my excuse again, it was, it was pure disgust. And quite often, you stay at the surface level, like say, if I was to say to myself, okay, why, why, why do I feel disgust? Most people would say, oh, it's because you've got like, it's because I've got um, a flabby belly. It's because I've got bingo wings. It's because I've got a fat bum. And they say at that surface level. So what you need to do is you need to ask yourself, yeah, but why, why does that make a difference? And just keep asking yourself why, and you will get to a root cause. And if you take again and take the example of, oh, it's because I've got a I've got a big bum, a flabby bum. Okay, well, why is that important? Well, it's not attractive. Okay, well, what does that mean? What does not being attractive mean? Well, it means that people aren't gonna like me very much. People are gonna think that I'm horrible. I look disgusting. Okay, and what does that mean? Well, if nobody likes me or people think I look disgusting, then they won't want to be around me. Well, what does that mean? 
and just keep stripping it back. And as painful as it is, it will actually get back to the root cause of what the actual problem is, because I guarantee 99.9% .9 of the time, what you look like is not the problem. What is on the outside is not the problem because we can all look at other people that have got a similar body size to us, look at other people that have had children, look at other people that have gone through very similar things and think that they are beautiful, think that they are confident, think that they are all of these things. But we struggle to see it for ourselves because we're masked and we're blinded by actually this external factor is what is to blame but actually it's something else that's bubbling on and you're never ever going to get over that you're never going to increase your body confidence until you find whatever that is and you work on that it's what I always work with my clients um, the method I use is from an inside out point of view because so often in this era that we're in, we work from the outside in. We look to fix the things that are on the outside. We look to fix the things that we can see, the things that we can touch, but actually it makes no difference if we do those because what is going on in the inside is always gonna be there if you don't address that. So that would be my advice is as painful as it might be, strip it back and find out actually what it means to you however you look, what that means to you and why that is so important. And Faye, do you think that's why sometimes people make a change to their body and then they don't feel like that's quite enough so then they want to do something else and get skinnier or do this or make their bum bigger or absolutely their wrinkles or because yeah. you haven't addressed like the root cause of why you feel like that? Yeah. Mm, that's so interesting. Absolutely. Or even the flip side, I guess, that you know, and I'm guilty of it. I know exercise will help how I feel mentally and physically, or, but I might be too tired. So I, you know, we see a lot of, I'm too tired to do it, or oh, I don't want to do that exercise, or I'll eat more, I'll drink more for it. So almost not helping ourselves when actually we know, well, maybe I could make my, I could lose a few pounds, you know, it's yeah. those kind of things, but we all find a reason perhaps why not. Yeah. To what you were saying, the sort of self-loathing and yeah. going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And actually you get yourself into such a cycle, it's that it, you, you, you end up self-sabotaging. Yeah. You, you are fulfilling the cycle and, if, and it becomes a safe place. As much as you don't like being there, it becomes a safe place and that is all you know. And ultimately people want to be happy and healthy. That is what they want to be. But they they miss those points because because they, they're not getting to the level where they can actually address that um because they're seeing so much more that isn't actually there and it isn't actually a problem but that is all they can focus on and those um those like self-sabotaging goals that joe that you were talking about and, and Faye we're talking about now they're I also think they're not particularly motivating goals for making lifestyle changes because you start off like I've got to do this program because I'm, I'm fat and I need to make my thighs thinner and it's you don't see the results of that very quickly and no. it's such a non-specific negative goal it's really not very motivating either so then people go into that cycle I'm talking from a PT point of view now for you, Joe jump in but people go into that cycle of like um like success for a little bit but it it doesn't really it, where are you going with it and you can't keep it up and the goal hasn't happened as quick as you wanted and then it goes down again and yeah. then you fail and then you feel terrible and then you choose to go start again and yeah I yeah I hadn't thought of it that way it's so interesting and actually what you need to address is inside and then out and then that would be so much it, it'd be such a healthy place to start a new exercise regime yeah. from too right yeah because well, again because it's like you say, the self-sabotaging thing, you're just getting yourself into that cycle um, because you're looking at things from the outside. If I fix this, then everything will be all right. If I fix that, then everything will be all right. But again, it just, it all boils back to what is actually going on on the inside. Um, it's, it all boils back to that, all boils down to that. Absolutely. And, and worryingly, like Bex and I see a lot of women almost go the other way don't know I just want to look skinny so exercise and exercise exercise sit-ups crunches planks mm -hmm. so they've got the body they want but they've got horrific pelvic floor symptoms yeah. don't want to be intimate with their partner because of those symptoms and it cascades into a whole 
other host of issues, isn't it? But yeah, it goes massive plant, but you know, then it's that's why it's so important we we do do it sensibly, we do it safely, isn't it? So then the rest the rest of your well-being is affected too. Absolutely. And it's and, and again on your perspective, on your point of view, for, for getting fit and healthy physically, doing it because of the actual reason to get fit and healthy rather than to change something that you're you're never going to be able to change. So I mean that in itself, just being fit and just being healthy, is the big in, big enough reason to actually exercise and to do all these things. But women don't see it, so they don't see the benefit of it a lot of times because because they're going after this unattainable goal. Um, so it's just again drawing it all back and and just stripping it all back down. Um, but that's what I was trying to say. But you articulate it so much better than me. That's what I was trying to say too. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah absolutely and this is the thing we're all singing from the same hymn sheet we're coming from different perspectives um from different skill sets from different backgrounds but actually we have all seen the results we've all seen that this is this is how minds work this is how women um work who have had babies who are having babies and yeah it's interesting that we're all coming from different points of view but actually we come to the same conclusion yeah oh my gosh we could talk all night about this but I'm gonna to have to go I'm going to questions from the Instagram account that people yeah um, so someone said I love my bump I've struggled since I have a small frame and still have a saggy tummy so that's yeah that's we hear that a lot right yeah. um someone said I and I can totally I understand this I felt beautiful during and then broken and weak after or fat and out of shape later that's like loads of women's timeline isn't it how you how your feelings would be yeah I feel like that so many people's um or someone said I didn't feel great in pregnancy but in hindsight I looked really great yeah. um and then in terms of questions ooh. Oh, here we go. I tend to bury my head in the sand. What are the signs of low body confidence? Yeah, and this is a really interesting one as well, because, uh, yeah, again, it's it's that whole sort of like not seeing, well, it sounds the opposite to what I said, not seeing what's in front of you, but it's not allowing yourself to see what's in front of you. So low signs of body confidence are the, those thoughts when you first look in the mirror, and again, that is always such a good point to start is what is the first thing that comes to your mind when you look in the mirror and, and go from there. Other signs, it can affect you physically as well. It can make your sleep bad. It can make your eating habits bad. You, maybe you eat too much. Maybe you eat too little. Maybe you eat the wrong thing. Um, it can really mess about with your hormones because if you're not getting the the right nutrition, the right exercise because of how you're feeling about yourself, then again, that will play, play. And it all goes back into that vicious cycle of things, that big pot of like just all lots of nastiness. Um, but all those things, the, the signs, if, you, if you're not recognizing, if you're not being overtly sort of like, oh, this is because I hate my body. You said about the physical aspects with partners, if you've always had quite a high sex drive and all of a sudden that goes down or you're scared about showing your body to them, um, if you don't want to wear a bikini or wear tight fitting clothes where normally you would have, all those things that, that just sort of like highlight how you're actually feeling. Um, when you look at photos of you before, how you feel when, when you look at those, um, and it's, it's just all those little things. There's so many tiny little fractions and it's really easy to miss if you only look at them in isolation, but it's when you put them all together, you can realize that actually there's a lot going on. There's a lot going on that I haven't really allowed myself to believe is going on. And, and yeah, it's looking at the whole bigger picture rather than just the little aspects. Um, and Faye, if someone's watching this, I'm conscious of time. If someone's watching this and anything we've said is like sort of 
run true with them or hit a chord with them what's their steps like what what can they do how like can we give them a little I don't want to say roadmap but like a little roadmap out <laughs> sorry <laughs> as it's like on my mind <laughs> what can they do <laughs> well, my, my first thing would be just to really assess with themselves what is going on for them because sometimes just the realization the thing that I said about looking at yourself in the mirror and then asking why that is a problem or what that means to them sometimes that can be just enough it's just it can be that light bulb moment but actually if they get stuck or if sometimes the shutters come down and actually your unconscious is like no I'm not going there at all if they get stuck or if they get to the point where actually this is too painful I can't do this on my own then I would always suggest to seek help. And like I say, that might be just from a friend or a close family member. It might be from PT or physio or anyone that can help them with that aspect of things. It might be from someone like myself that deals with psychology and the emotions around it. It could be from a number of places and there are multiple sources where you can get help, but don't sit on it because it won't go away on its own the only way that you're ever going to get to that point is if you break it all down and if you find out what is going on on the inside and you just work on it holistically you work on it from from looking at it from all angles um so i was always don't leave it 10 years like i did don't don't just go on and think this is it this is this is how it's going to be this is my life from now on in and that's how i felt um and then eventually I was like oh actually no it doesn't have to be like that <laughs> and it took me 10 years which is why I work with women so it doesn't take them that long but yeah that is my main bit of advice is don't sit on it and just think that that is how your life is because it really isn't it doesn't have to be that way and Joe, we talk about this quite a lot so like I'm a huge supporter of emotional wellness as well as physical we always talk about that don't we so yeah I think sometimes there's a stigma to go and get some help to feel better inside as well as feel better on the outside. But why wouldn't you? Like, I, I 100% think it's so valuable. Even if, yeah. Yeah. And even if you feel okay, you know, I don't stop going to the gym because I feel, you know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, exactly. So, Faye, if, um, if people want to find you, can you tell us, like, um, what you have, like, how they can find you online, what you offer? Please. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Well, one thing I wouldn't say, unless you write my name down, Faye Tchaikovsky Davis, I wouldn't try just spelling that off the top of your head. That is why I have not called my business after my name. But um, <laughs> but no, I, I own motherhood in mind. So obviously you've got the motherhood, you've got the mind, and, and that is where the name came from. So I'm on Facebook. I've got a page on Facebook. I've got um, a website, which is motherhoodinmind.com. Um, I've got a Facebook group as well, which is a free group, and it's just got lots of accurate advice. And I think that you lovely ladies are going to be coming on and speaking at some point as well, hopefully. That would be amazing. Um, but lots of experts and things like that on a whole host of things. And also, I've, I'm always there for one-to-one sessions as well. Um, so Instagram, Facebook, and website, Motherhood in Mind. Um, yeah, just let me up. And I give um, 30 minute free calls as well, just to just to see what's going on for you and see if it is something that that does need one to one work or um, I can sort of like point you in the right direction of which which way is the best way forward for you. So that's completely really amazing. But I think we're going to have you on again because I know you and I had a quite a long chat about so many things um, and your take on like so many things to do with um pregnancy and motherhood was just like so refreshing I was like yes 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 so um yeah hopefully we'll get to chat again but thanks so much for this evening it was so good my pleasure yeah absolutely it's been it's been a real real pleasure and yeah I am I am a bit different in the sense that I come from a bit of a no messing point of view I'm like right you've got a problem let's get sorted it's as simple as that It, it is as simple as that let's not pussyfoot around um don't deal with everything that's gone on before this is now let's get sorted end of love it love it it. we'll put all your details underneath this post all right thank you it's been great thanks see you later